This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Congratulations! You just received and assembled your new Sailrite Fabricator sewing machine. I bet you're anxious to get started sewing right away. But before you do, watch this helpful quick start video. It's loaded with helpful information to get optimal performance out of your new Fabricator sewing machine from Sailrite. This quick start guide was designed for new and amateur sewers, but it still may have useful information for even the professional seamster. Let's get started. The first task is threading. Place your cone of thread on the thread stand and run the thread up to the thread stand arm. Pass the thread towards you through the far right hole of the three hole thread guide, then up over the top and through the leftmost hole. Now pass the thread through the top hole of the guide, bringing the thread around to the front, then through the bottom hole of the guide. Pull the thread over the top of and between the tension discs, then down through the bottom hole of the guide. This is a pre-tensioner device. Pass the thread around and between the tension discs of the upper tension device. Be sure the thread goes all the way to the core of the post. Pass the thread up through the take-up spring and then under the thread guide. Lead the thread now upward through the elongated thread finger and then through the take-up arm from right to left. Lead the thread down through the thread finger on the left hand side. Then the thread finger below the main tension assembly. Pass it through the needle bar thread guide from front to back. And finally through the needle from left to right through the eye. Draw out about four inches of thread and then pass it through the center of the presser foot. Your Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine is now threaded appropriately. Up next, bobbin winding. A brand new bobbin winder may need initial tweaking before using. You may be required to adjust the amount of tension on the prong spindle to keep the bobbin from freely spinning. Use a standard screwdriver and pry the posts apart slightly until the bobbin fits on the post under enough tension to keep it from freely spinning. It does fit on the spindle here, but it's rather snug. Our goal of not spinning freely has been achieved, but we'd like it to be a little bit easier to install and remove, so we'll squeeze the posts together slightly, and now it's perfect. The thread stand accommodates two cones of thread. One can be used to wind the bobbins. Run the thread up to the thread stand arm. Then to the back end of the bobbin winder, pull the thread through the hole near the thread tensioner, and then behind and under, pulling the thread between the discs of the tensioner. To adjust the amount of thread tension while winding bobbins, use this thumb screw. Tension should only be firm enough to achieve a good wind on the bobbin. Bring the thread forward to the bobbin and push the thread tail through one of the holes in the bobbin from the inside. Push the bobbin winder lever forward to move the wheel against the drive belt of the sewing machine. And now you're ready to wind bobbins. Bobbin winding can be done in two ways, disengaging the posi pin or while you're sewing. If you would like to wind bobbins with your sewing machine job still under the needle, but the sewing machine disengaged, simply remove the patented posi pin. And now you can wind bobbins with your work still under the needle without the sewing machine sewing. So now when we wind bobbins, the balance wheel will spin, our bobbin will wind, but the needle is disengaged. Hold the thread tail and power the machine to wind bobbins. Cut the tail flush with the edge of the bobbin after about 20 rotations or more, and then continue under power until the bobbin is full. If the wound bobbin is not even, loosen the screw holding the bobbin tensioner to the bracket and move it to the left or right until an appropriate even fill is achieved. Do not overfill the bobbin as thread may jam in the bobbin case. Fill it to about 80% of the bobbin's outside diameter. Here the bobbin is not full enough, which means we will have to wind more bobbins more often. Use the stop screw latch to control the fill. Rotate the screw clockwise to increase the amount of thread on the bobbin and counterclockwise to decrease the amount of thread. In some situations, you may have to adjust the finger by bending it with your finger. This will sometimes allow you to achieve a perfect setting. Then you can use that stop screw to make final adjustments. Once it's set in the appropriate position, you will not have to readjust it ever again. 
This bobbin is wound too full. It may jam up when we place it in the bobbin case. So Zach will make another adjustment with that stop screw. Now our bobbin winder is set appropriately. We're going to show the second way you can wind bobbins. Here we're going to take the posi pin and engage it into our Stitch Pro balance wheel. Now we can wind bobbins while we sew. Zach is still holding the tail of the thread on the bobbin, but once he gets it so far, he will take it and cut it flush with the bobbin as he did before. Now he does not need to pay attention to the bobbin winder. He can sew his project and the bobbin will fill and stop filling at the appropriate time without any needed attention. Now it's time to concentrate on removing and installing the bobbin case. Rotate the balance wheel so the needle is about to enter the feed dog. Always rotate the balance wheel towards you, never away from you. With the needle at this position, we can reach underneath the sewing machine through the access hole of the oil pan to reach the bobbin case. To remove the bobbin case, lift the spring-loaded lever and pull the bobbin case out. The lever locks the bobbin in its case. Release the lever and the bobbin will come out. We've already showed you how to wind a bobbin. Now we're going to take that bobbin and insert it in the bobbin case. The bobbin should be inserted so that when the thread is pulled on, the bobbin spins clockwise. Insert the wound bobbin into the bobbin case. The thread tail should remain outside of the case and be passed through the slot in the side of the bobbin case. Pull the thread under the tension spring. Now, if you pull on the thread, the bobbin should turn clockwise. If it's not, take it out and flip it over. To install the bobbin case, lift and hold the spring-loaded lever and push the case into the axle of the shuttle assembly. Be sure the bobbin case is seated appropriately and locked in position. Use your finger and jiggle the bobbin case around to be sure it's locked and seated appropriately. To pull up the bobbin thread, make sure the presser feet are up. Grasp the end of the needle thread, then rotate the top of the balance wheel towards you to lower the needle. Continue to rotate the wheel until the needle is once again in its highest position. Pull on the needle thread gently to the right and the bobbin thread will be drawn up through the needle plate. Now release the needle thread and use a small instrument, a seam ripper, a screwdriver or scissors to slide under the feet and pull both threads outward. The needle thread should be through the inner presser foot when completed. The fabricator has an awesome knee lifter that raises the presser foot. We'll cover that next. The Serite fabricator has a knee lifter which makes it possible to lift the presser foot hands free. However, it also features a hand lever in the rear of the machine that does the same. You will love using the knee lever and it will quickly become the standard for lifting your presser foot. For optimal performance, we suggest adjusting all slop out of the knee lever. To remove undesired slack in the knee lift lever, adjust the left set screw closest to the needle. Loosen the nut and push the knee lever until just before it engages the foot. Then tighten the set screw until it touches the oil tray. After that, tighten the nut to hold its location. The screw on the right closest to the belt will influence how high the foot will raise. Loosen the nut and adjust the set screw. Your goal is to get the maximum foot lift when pushing the knee lifter to the right. When the desired foot height is achieved, tighten the set screw until it touches the oil tray. Then tighten the nut to hold its location. These settings can be adjusted to suit your personal preferences. Using the knee lever will give you more foot lift than the hand-operated lever behind the machine. Since the hand-operated lever is rather stubborn and hard to move, using the knee lifter to raise the foot prior to using the hand lever will make this job very easy. Next, we'll briefly cover how to set thread tension. Proper thread tension is essential to a good stitch. Too much tension in your fabric may pucker. Too little and your stitch can look poor and not hold well. The Sayrite Fabricator has about 11 full turns of the tension adjustment. Here, we are turning the tension knob almost all the way out, meaning it will supply almost no tension on the thread. Why are we doing this? We want to show you the full range of tension from almost none to almost max tension. We will sew two layers of Sumbrella marine grade fabric using a V92 polyester thread 
Notice that we are turning the tension knob clockwise to increase tension as we sew. Tension should always be set in two layers of whatever fabric you are sewing. After setting in two layers, you will typically find no more tension adjustment is required, even if the layers of that fabric assembly are increased. The knob was turned about 38 quarter rotations, or about 10 full rotations. Each quarter turn increased our tension on the thread. Let's inspect the stitches to see the results. This is the top side of the fabric and the stitches are loose. Look at the underside. They are very loose where we started with no tension. But as we pan across on the underside, we notice that the stitches get tighter. That happened due to the fact that we continued to tighten the tension assembly until eventually they look pretty good. So going back and looking at the starting point on the underside where the stitches were loose, we notice that they tighten up and look almost perfect right about here. And we will assume that the top side will look good at that same location. Yep, on the top it looks good there as well. What we want is we want the knots to be buried in the fabric as much as possible. If we look at the end stitches on the top side, we notice that the knots were actually pulled through the top. This is way too much tension. So, in general, setting tension is a combination of using the correct needle to thread size for the fabric you will be sewing, and then setting the proper tension so the knots between the layers of fabric are not on top or on the bottom of the assembly. It is always better to have slightly less tension than too much to reduce puckering. Then the finished results will be perfect. And lastly, in this quick start guide, we want to cover how to set stitch length. The Sayrite Fabricator can sew a stitch length of up to 8 millimeters in length in both forward and reverse. Before making stitch length changes, you must press the plate labeled PUSH. It is also recommended that the reverse lever be depressed slightly while turning the round dial. If the plate labeled PUSH is not depressed correctly, the stitch length dial may go out of proper adjustment. Here is the appropriate way to press on that plate. Doing this will ensure that the dial will never go out of adjustment. However, press on it like this and the pip at the bottom of the plate is pushed away from the inside of the dial. Now the stops on the dial can be bypassed and your stitch length dial may be turned too far. Here's another possible scenario. This too is incorrect. For problem-free stitch length adjustment, work the dial like this. We hope this quick start guide has been helpful. If you have suggestions for future videos for this sewing machine, let us know in the comments below or email us directly. Enjoy your new sewing machine from Sailrite.